Okay, so uh, you can see my mouse as well? Uh, yeah, I can see your mouse now. Yeah. Okay, so the reason I picked this one is because I remember, um, I'm not sure if it was on this exact day, but you brought up this chart in one of your videos. And um, uh, you can see my, my cursor here, right? Yeah, I see it. I think, so I think you mentioned on that day, I think you mentioned uh, it became clearly always in short on bar 14 here. Okay, yeah. And you said that's sell the close and you don't get out, uh, you don't have to get out until 24. And I was like, I think I sold this close or I sold somewhere on the way up on 15 and I exited with like one point or two points. And I was like disappointed by 15, I exited. And then, but then I watched you and I'm like, how, how, how do I sit through this? And you were, you were, from, from my interpretation of your videos, you always seem to have a good grasp of when a pullback is dangerous and when it's not, and when to sit through it and when not to. So like, I was wondering if, if you sell this close, can you talk about the swing perspective of how you manage it as a swing and the scalp perspective of like, what's disappointing? How do you manage the trade with those two different um, styles of trading? Yeah, and, and let me, you know, let me do it like this. Do you mind, I've got the same chart. Do you mind if I, I'll, I'll share it. On my yeah, 100%, let's do it that way. That way I can move the mouse around. Can you see this? Yeah, got it. Perfect. Yeah, so going back to this chart, the first thing is it is a sell to close right here. It's sell to close, three consecutive bear bars. The odds are you're going to get a couple of leg, legs down. And this goes back to, Al talks about it all the time. The most important thing you can get that one can understand is understanding are there more buyers and sellers above the bar what that means is is the breakout going to succeed or fail right and you have to measure it so this breakout what is it breaking out of well it's breaking out of everything to the left and we don't know if this this trading range could have gone on for quite some time right so what you have to measure is for one this sell-off is probably stronger than this bull bar right and the next thing you have to think through is okay what is you know what's going on right here well there's going to be plenty of bulls who you know what do they what do the bulls do here here and here and here they're buying at the bottom so what are they going to do at this low and this low and all these lows right. they're going to buy so you have to measure bulls are buying you know they're going to scale in well are they going to be disappointed and try to get out of break even up here and look right. what happened in this tail when everything retraced back over here mm bull sold out of longs and bears know that too. So some bears still sell other bears will say, you know, maybe it's trading range. I'll sell more higher if it's testing the range. And as far as, you know, it, it, there, there's many ways to manage swings. You can be quick to get out and, and it's a give and a take. If you're really quick to get out. So if I was to, I'm going to get out above this bar. Well, you know, maybe I could get out at the close, but then I'd sell again below this bar. Right. So what's my risk? My risk is my, for one, I'm, I'm minimizing any loss potential, but I'm also risking missing out on more down. Right. And this is where always then is really helpful. If you're selling the close, you know, if you had the choice between being short or long at this bar, what would you do? And also I begin to that is it's important to measure at every moment if you're in a trade, would you enter that same direction at that moment? So right. if I'm willing to stay short at the height of this bar, if I sell up here, it's no different than selling the high of this bar and putting a stop up here. Right. So as far as, you know, number one, the first thing I would say is if you're looking at always in, you know, ask yourself, would you want to buy above this bar? You know, is this a second leg trap or the odds favor second leg down? It probably favors second leg down. Right. What you don't know is, is the second leg down going to be, you know, here's a breakout. Is this going to be the second leg down or is it going to be multiple legs down? Right. So, and this is why Al talks about uh, buy the close, sell the close. And, you know, there's a, there's a section in the latter portion of the videos that talks about entering late in a trend. Hmm. And he talks about traders will sell closes and they'll assess the test back down to the low close. I mean, if you look at every bar, almost every one of them, you can sell this close and almost get out of the low close. That's not a good place to sell. 
Right. You get high up here and it goes a little bit higher. Buy here, it retests the high close. Right. So for most traders, you know, in terms of always in, you could sell this close. You probably don't have to get out above this bar. And, you know, if you did, maybe you sell again below this bar. Hmm. If you, you know, do you get out here? Well, you could, but the channel down is pretty tight. And one thing I would measure is even at this point, when's the last time the bulls made money buying below the bar? You know, did they make money buying here? Probably not. So even if you set a stop one tick above this bar, it didn't get filled. Right. And it went down lower. So, you know, as far as, you know, selling this breakout, you have to be aware of when you're selling a breakout, you know, when the market goes sideways for a long time and you get a breakout, there's a greater chance that the market's going to act as a trading range. It's going to, right. the lows are going to be a magnet. It's the same concept of, okay, well, we closed this gap here. So what do we think could happen here? Well, you get a couple of sell climb axes and you magically rally back to this price level. Right. So, you know, even a trade, as crazy as it sounds, if a trader bought this low, you've heard I'll talk about it, you know, buy, buying here, risking 20, 30 points, and they buy more above the bull bar here, that's probably their break even. Right. You know, it happens all the time. And I wouldn't recommend doing any of that. What I would recommend is really focusing on swing trading and always in to the point where you can, you can sell this close, put your stop up here, be comfortable that, you know, maybe this is only a 25% pullback, maybe a 30% pullback, which is pretty common hmm. and hold for the second leg. And then you move your stop here. You know, do you get out above this bar? You could. And if you, you know, you, maybe you put your stop one tick above and you get the second leg down here, what you have to measure, and this is kind of knowing how things reverse is this is a reversal attempt. This is a reversal attempt. And here's reversal attempt. Well, in a trading range, the market's always trying to reverse. Right. And you know, the more the more sell-offs you get, the more sell climaxes you get, the odds favor a reversal. So maybe this has a 30% chance of reversing. Well, this is going to be higher, and this is going to be higher. And then you also have traders who, you know, maybe they bought here and maybe they bought here, and maybe they're going to buy more lower. So right. traders scale in all the time. And you know, you don't have to. It's just important to understand that because that's why in the trading range, you get a couple of legs down and the market reverses and you get a couple of legs up and the market will find, you know, reverse back down to some sort of 50% level. So if you, if you're swing trading, it does that, does your stop and your management style differ compared to like, for example, if you sold the 14 close for a scalp and then you see 15, sure. do you, do, how do you, how do you, yeah manage it differently in terms of where your stop is and where you exit based on disappointment. So that, that's what's tricky is let's go into the math about those. If I sell this close and put my stop up here and I'm going to hold for a few legs down, well, by this point, I know my actual risk. It's here. Right. So if I had to guess this high to this low projecting down is going to give me close to twice my risk. Right. So it's an, it, it, it's an easier trade to manage. If I sell this close and I scale in, where do I put my stop? I put it here or here. Well, the problem is, you know, in terms of risk reward, I've got to get out well before price gets up to here. Right. And what you'll notice, you know, look at this bar. There's, you know, what if someone sold this close, sold more than this close, and here's their break even price? You know, that, there's right. a reason for that. There's also, bulls they say this bar is too big but it's strong enough for a second leg i'm going to buy 50 percent right right get out of the high so the tricky part with that is you know yeah i think plenty of people sold this close and sold more higher and the subjective part about scalping is how do you manage that you know because there, there is that low probability chance that this could be you know maybe it's a second leg trap and we reverse up so Maybe you, you sell this close, you scale in, and you didn't get out of break even, and the market goes sideways, and maybe it gets down to here and reverses up. So, you know, kind of like this, you sold this close, you sell more higher. Well, let's pretend you still had a target to get out of everything down here, mm -hmm. and you got trapped here, and this went 
you know, up much higher. So as far as the, you know, where would you put your stop? That is pretty subjective. I mean, you could, you could, you could trade all the way in, sell this close, put your stop up here if you wanted or up here, you know, and most people are going to be, you know, again, the problem is, is that this is a breakout and the breakout implies it's bad risk reward, but high probability. Right. So you're risking more and your risk reward is great. Therefore, you have to assess what advantage do you have? And that advantage you have is probability. So at any point, the probability becomes too low, your risk reward's bad, it's a bad trade. And that's what's difficult for people to assess. Like right here, if I'm selling this close and my stops up here, my risk reward is bad because I mean, what do I expect price to go down to here? I mean, it's basically one times. Right. So the next question is what's my probability? It's not 60%. Right. Therefore, it's not a good trade. Mm. So you have to, you, you really have to focus on breakouts that have, that look strong enough that you're going to get a few legs down. And the tricky part is sometimes they have, you know, sometimes they get a small second leg. Sometimes they get several second legs down, you know, or two or three legs down. Right. Yeah. Like um, when I'm looking at this now, I remember this is, this is two years, about two years ago and two years ago and up until then, I was scalping a lot, a lot more sure. than I do now. Now I've been holding for a bit longer. And back then I was thinking, you know, I sold the 14 close and it's not going down. 15 didn't go down and 16 still not going down. So I was thinking this is disappointing for me as a scalper who's trying to get a quick, whatever, four points, five points. And now I'm starting to sense that there, you have to give the bulls a chance to get their pullback to where they scaled in and the, the breakout point and then expect your second leg down. So yes. as a swing trader, now I'm thinking more in terms of bulls need a chance first. So you're selling this close, but you're, you're not gonna get another giant bear bar that goes down 20 points. You have to give it time. And because I started off scalping, now like see bear, uh, bar 18 is technically, it's a hidden low two. And then you have 19 coming down towards the 14 close. And I'm thinking, my, the old the old thought patterns are coming back and saying, I should be exiting right at the 14 close because that must be disappointing for scalpers who sold the 14 close. And I'm often not like I'm getting caught in that in that thought pattern and not exit and and not letting it play out, you know, for the two legs. So how do you yeah. balance those if you're if you are selling the close hoping for a swing, but then you see that there might be bears exiting at the low close? So how do you balance those two? Yeah, so you're talking about how do you balance between getting back out of the low close versus holding? Yeah, exactly. Now that goes into there's a give and a take to everything, and if you you hear Al talk about this a lot, he's very quick to get out, and that causes him to miss a lot of big moves. Right. Well, if you're you know just like up here, if you're quick to get out somewhere, you know maybe you sell here and maybe you get back out at the low close you miss, you, you risk missing this, but what do you gain? Well, what you gain is not getting caught in some sort of second leg, you know, second leg down and reversal up. So there's always going to be a, you know, a give and a take and you have to, it's either going to increase your probability or lower your probability or increase your risk reward. Mm -hmm. And the tricky part is you have to, you know, I think most people, and that's why I talk about always in is, if you, if you trade the kind of, as Al says, the forest gum, just be kind of, you know, stupid for lack of words. You sell mm -hmm. the close, you're not going to get out above this bar, stops up here, and, you know, you hold, there's no reason to get out above this bar. So then you're left with, do I get out above this bar or do I stay short? So maybe you put your stop one tick above and it sells off, and then maybe you get out above this bar. And then if you were to buy here, you know, four protected bull bars, do you get out below here? You probably don't have to. Strong bull bar, you know, then you're, you get out below this bar. Again, you probably don't have to. What about this bar? You probably do. And then, right. you know, so that's, that's one thing, you know, as far as, and the more you get out on limit orders, if you get out on stop entries, it's going to keep you in the trade longer. Right. But it's going to cause you to take, you know, you're going to take bigger losses because, 
if I'm selling below this bar, I'm a lot better off selling at the highs. So it's a good right. thing. So is that is that something that you like? You, there's a give and take, like you said. There's always a trade off. And if you exit at measured move targets, and if you exit in, like if you're buying and you exit into strength, then you're going to keep a lot more of your profits than if you wait for a signal bar. But then if you wait for the signal bar and it doesn't come, you can make these massive swings. So is that is the lesson there that you just need to have enough iterations of it to figure out what you want to give and what you want to take? Is it just like a personal a personal journey to to go through it and see what you yeah. what you enjoy more, what makes most sense to you? Is that is that all it is? It's just like I think that's absolutely what works best for you. I think that's absolutely what it is. And you know, as far as so it's best, you know, how do you how do you find your trading style and manage that trade? And you know, what I would say, and this is kind of goes back to the comment Al made when someone said, do most professional traders swing trade or trade always in? And Al mm -hmm. said, most probably don't trade always in. Mm -hmm. And what he's implying is most traders don't sell this close and hold and get out above this bar. And they buy and then get out below this bar. While that's certainly profitable and a great strategy, what do most people do? They anticipate. So, right. you know, they sell this close, they anticipate maybe bad follow through. So what do they do? They take part off and, you know, they, they expect maybe a pullback back to this low. So maybe they take more off as it's going down, expecting it to retrace, or, you know, they say, this is a reasonable signal bar. We may go a couple points below it, but whatever we go, we're probably going to get back to it. So if it starts going a couple points below, mm -hmm. they know it's going to get back to here. So kind of, as you said, if you, if you knew you could get out at this low, rather than getting out up here, or if you could get out above this bar, rather than getting out up here, you would do that. Right. So people, I think, naturally begin to evolve their thought process, you know, in terms of maybe I don't want to be long, maybe this is a leg in a trading range and we're close to the top. And if this is a leg in a trading range, I don't want to buy here because I can probably buy lower. Or if this is a tight enough channel, this is a trend line break, you know, here's a trend line break here. We'll probably get a higher low major trend reversal. So maybe I don't want to buy up here. Hmm. And if I wait five or 10 bars, maybe I can buy lower. So people start to anticipate, it's kind of like chess, starting to anticipate several moves ahead. Right. And I think, um, I think Al mentioned, I'm not sure when it was, but he was saying that when you, when you first start out, it makes sense to take the buy and then, wait for a signal but as you get more comfortable it becomes second nature to get, want to get in and get out because you reach a certain level you think it's probably going to pull back here even if we go higher later we're probably going to pull back for a couple small legs so i prefer to just exit high and then wait for two small legs down and buy again either by the close or by above the signal bar so as you start to get a sense of when the probabilities start to shift past 50 percent and lower that and the probabilities become higher that we might pull back with experience, I think most people start to go towards um, exiting um, without signal bars and just at, at targets. And when they think that this is not looking as strong as it could, I'm going to exit here and look to buy again later. But for, for sure. beginners, do you think for, uh, because of because the discretion of a beginner um, is limited, do you think it's better for a beginning trader to take the, take the stop entry and, um, and wait for a specific exit signal? Yeah, you know, I, I, I want to kind of relate that back to, you know, the joke about trading is you have all the freedom in the world, which is great, but also the worst thing you can have. Hmm. And as, when you're starting out, absolutely, you know, stop entries are a great way to limit what you can do. And it's a great way to keep things I mean, more simple. You know, do you, do you really want to sell below this bar? Probably not. You want to go below here? I mean, maybe. So, yeah, you know, waiting on stop entries, and that kind of gets into, you know, if you're if you're having a, are you better off selling during the breakout or waiting for the close? You're probably better off waiting for the close, the majority of the bars. Right. So as far as waiting for a bar to close, waiting for stop entries, most people are definitely going to be better off doing that. Good advice. Okay, so. Now we can go through, um, you, I guess you have the charts there. So you yeah, can just I just down. So you might have just 
Yeah, so the, the second one I wanted to ask you about was, um, so the, the first three there, March 17th and the two under that, are, sure. are both for strong breakouts. So for March 17th, bar 36, in a situation like that, um, is that, how do you how do you gauge if you should be buying that breakout or if you should be waiting for a pullback to the breakout points or the moving average, or do you make it a little bit more dynamic and maybe buy part at the 36 close and then buy more lower if, if you pull back to the breakout point? How do yeah. you balance the buying the close versus waiting for a pullback to some significant level? Sure, and what I would say is, so how do you how do you trade bar 35 to 36 the breakout the first is context and this is a great example of you know at the end of the day it's a small pullback trend and you look at the day and you go from 11 o'clock to the close this rally you know it's a credible rally right but when did it become clearly always in long you know even here it's breaking above many many bars right however look at every breakout today and find strong follow through. Here's a breakout bar breaking at the highs, but it went for two bars up and then tested back. Another bar up, tested back. You see, you know, even down here, sure, you're breaking out the downside, but this, you know, big tail, look to the left. So for the past several hours, you've been in a trading range and you're now getting one bar that is breaking out of the range. And it's real similar to this. I mean, you're, you, even though this was stronger, Hmm. you're still getting a breakout below a trading range right in this case you're getting a breakout above a trading range so how do you manage it well there's several ways you can you can buy the close and some traders what i think most traders will do is they may buy a full position and they'll they'll be disappointed so a weak bar doji what are they naturally going to start doing well if you think about you you know what's the most profitable time to trade well it's 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 buying strong closes because your probability is decent and the reality is you could buy this close but your stop one tick below right and buy the close and obviously and make a good risk you know make a decent profit so most traders would start reducing their position here and at some point maybe they want to wait to buy the moving average or you know maybe they reduce their position others will say just start buying one or two point pullbacks. Right. So, and, and there will be some traders who, you know, maybe they buy and they keep their stop down here and they just trail, you know, but I think that's a really, that's challenging to do because if you're buying, if you're buying here and put your stop down here, you know, are you, it goes back to what's your goal? Are you buying, uh, you know, are you getting out for a second leg? Are you getting out for, many times your risk right so yeah so i mean again it, it goes back to context like if we go back to and this is a this is kind of a similar situation right yeah we're talking about breakout bar 40 yeah and 56 so here is yeah here's bar 40 and here's bar 56 yeah so you know look right here strong breakout and it's breaking below many, many bars. Right. The odds are you're probably gonna get a second leg. And even here though, it's a trading, it's a doji. Right. And it's warning traders that, you know, could it be a second leg trap? Sure. And then you get a, you know, what happened? You know, think about why this bar went up. Well, if you sold this close and you're disappointed, you may get it back out of low close, which means it may reverse up a little bit. Right. And, you know, the next piece is measure how big is this stop entry compared to the size of this breakout. Hmm. It's not that big. Right. So there's slight, you know, there's probably a little, you know, slightly, you know, is it 60% or is it close to 55? I don't know, but you'll probably get a second leg down. Right. Which you did. What's different about bar 56? Well, how many bars are you breaking below? And you're breaking below basically everything on the day. Right. So if you sell this close, you're probably going for at least a little bit lower. Now, the problem you have is you've got support the prior day's lows. This is also the best looking breakout. And you got a sell climax here, sell climax here, you know, trading rate price action here. 
And also, I mean, I know we know it's the FOMC report, so there's a greater yeah. chance of, you know, some sort of sell climax and reversal up. Right. But if you did sell those clothes and you get three consecutive bear bars, how are you feeling after this bull bar? Hmm. You're disappointed. Right. So if you're disappointed, what you're thinking is we might go a little bit lower. Maybe we go below here, but how much lower are we going to go? And if I, you know, if I'm on the other side of that trade, you know, again, I think it's also one thing we haven't mentioned is it's really important to understand that the majority of the time you can make, you can trade in both directions to make money. Right. So if someone can buy this close and use a really wide stop and buy more, you know, here, here, or here, and they're probably going to make money. Right. So if you're selling this close and you're disappointed with this, it makes sense to start scaling out of your position. And that's why in part why this happened, you know, and this all goes back to measuring the strength of the breakout, you know, two strong bull bars here. Well, what, who got trapped? Anybody that bought here is now in a losing position. Hmm. So, so that's that. Go ahead. Yeah. And no, so that, this is kind of like, this is a good example actually, because it relates to the first chart I showed you. So this is a situation where obviously it's FOMC, but let's say sure. just based on the chart itself, 56 is if you sell the close 56, then you see 50, um, 58 and it's a big bull bar. So mm -hmm. if you're, if you're saying, well, this is a big enough breakout that maybe we'll get a, a couple or a few legs down, I'm going to hold for a swing to make the, the math work because 55, 56 are big. If I'm putting myself above 54, 55, then I want to at least give it a couple legs down. Then you see 58, 59, that becomes your actual risk. If you put your stop below, put your stop above 59. And if you're holding for a couple legs down because of the strong breakout, how do you, how do you know, or you don't to know, but like, how do you make the call if this is a big, despite being a big breakout, I only want to give it a couple, one more leg down. And so I'm going to exit quickly versus I'm going to give it a few legs down. You know what I mean? Sure. And, and in part, you know, the, the first piece I would lay with that is, you know, it's when you're trailing. So strong breakout, follow through and I'll look to the left. You know, you've got the prior, the prior lows over here. You've got a pretty strong looking bull bar. And, you know, also, is this the start of a bear trend or is this, you know, it is a breakout of a trading range. And, you know, sure, it's late in the spirit channel, but there's a couple factors you've got, you know, for the first really more than half of the day, we were in a trading range. Right. So, you know, is this going to be a magnet? Well, it will. I mean, if you look at trading range days, that's why trending trading range, ranges happen a lot. And that is they know it's a trading range. And they're confident that even if they buy somewhere in here or a couple points lower that if they buy more, worst case, they can get out break even. Right. And if you're disappointed by this and then you see, you know, this big bear bar and you put your stop up here, well, it's more or less weighing if bulls bought here and they manage the trade properly, they're going to make money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you look at that, even if you trailed your stop, you sell, you're near short here, stop up here, you see this bar, and then you see this bear bar. You know, here's how it, the, the one thing it's important to do is ask yourself, okay, if I'm short at this close, it's the same thing as selling this close right. on the stop up here. So what's my probability of if I sell this close and put my stop up here? Well, is it 60% chance that it's going lower? No. Is it mm. 50? Maybe. So if it's 50, 50, what's my target? You know, is my target way down here. Right. Is it a second leg down? So that's part of the problem. So, you know, a lot of times the math becomes really neutral. So if you're selling this close, that's why I'll often will put a stop one or two ticks above a bar right. because right. what is he doing? Well, he wants the market to keep going lower. However, he doesn't want to risk. He'd rather give up a little bit of probability and, you know, minimize his risk, which would right. increase his profit potential. So that's kind of how I'd look at that. That makes that's, sense. Okay. That make, that's really clear to me. That makes sense. So essentially you're at every moment you are like, if you take a trade, you're saying, where is the correct stop for this, for this swing? And is the reward realistic? Like yes. you can't just see 55, 56, 57 and be like, I'm going to go for one, one time on yeah. risk. And that's all the way like 
100 points away. Like it has, it has to be a realistic target. So you're saying, if I sell this close, put their stop at the correct spot, how realistic is it that I can reach this target? Is it 60% if it's a one R, like one times? And then you're gauging that on every bar, every tick. So like when you see bar 61, you're saying, is it actually realistic that I'm gonna make, make one times my risk if my stop is now above 59? Am I going to make one R and I'm, am I 60% or greater certain of that? And so you're, you're just judging that at every bar. That's, that's exactly. Exactly. And, and what I would add with that real quick is, you know, we all, obviously you're supposed to, you, you, you have to weigh the math on every trade when you take it. Well, right. you also have to weigh the math, you know, you, you can't do it, but you got to weigh the math every tick. So you got to every, you know, at least every five bars, you have to reassess the probability changes, you know, the probability changes with this bear bar, it changes mm -hmm. with the bull bar. So your, your trader's equation is, is never absolute. Right. And then that's another, so that's kind of, you have to always be thinking through. And that's why it's easy to think through, you know, what would I do? You know, if you can't make a decision in terms of, should I get out at this close? Well, would you sell this close? And if the answer is no, get out, then you need to get out. Mm -hmm. That's really good advice. Okay, that makes a lot of sense to me. Sure. So, um, for that, this is the last chart for I think it's the last chart for strong breakout. Maybe there's one more, but in a situation like, um, yeah, I guess this this works too for twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, the strong breakout. But this one's a little bit different because it's happening within the rally that started the day. Mm -hmm. So it's not clearly breaking out of the range, but it's breaking out of the tight channel that it came from down to twenty four. Yeah. Um, so in a situation like that, do you treat that differently? Like it's three bear bars, it's probably going to get a second leg down, but we're also near the low of day. We're also low in a potential trading range. Are you in this kind of situation? Are you thinking maybe it's better for me to buy a pull, to sell a pullback instead of selling the close? Or like, how, I guess my question um, for the breakout, like the last question for the breakouts is in what situation would you say that it's probably better to wait for a pullback and not sell the close? And also, if I'm going to sell the close, what would you recommend for any level of trader to say, should you smell it, should, should you sell a small piece on the, on the close? And then like, if you're going to sell, let's say you're going to sell two contracts, that's your base, your base size. Then if you're uncertain, if we're, if we're in an area where you think we might pull back then sell one on the close and one at the pullback, instead of selling both at the close, because if you wait for the pullback for both contracts, then Obviously, there's the give and take where you might miss the entire trend or miss the, miss the trade. So, would you, would, do you think that's a fair meet? A yeah, fair I'm, I'm, glad, meet? I'm glad you said that. And 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 let's talk about. I want to go into that. So let's talk about this bull bar. It's the same logic. When you're, you know, everybody starting out is usually restricted to one position, and that 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 skews their thinking in terms of that's not how institutions think. Mm -hmm. Institutions have many contracts to deploy and many ways to do it so bar one strong enough bull bar is probably going a little bit higher well or this bar yeah strong enough bull bar is probably going higher however what do you what's the one variable you don't know how deep will the pullback be so right. you may buy one contract and then buy more 50 percent. now i don't think it went 50 percent, but let's just pretend it did right it changes your math right it makes it a little bit better so in terms of are you better off buying this close and buying one more lower? Are you better off selling this close or this close and trying to sell one more higher? It is, that is the, again, everybody hates this answer, but it's just true. It's subjective. And it's, it's the most important piece, I would say, especially down here is, are you okay with selling this close and putting a stop up here? Right. And can you, you know, are you, you know, are you going to panic? when you see this bar, because although you're, you know, it's, you know, yeah, it's three consecutive sell climaxes here, here, and here. Well, when's the last time the bulls made money buying a low bar? If I turn this to a 15 minute chart, this is going to be, you know, what, two or three big bear bars. Right. And, you know, the first reversal up is probably going to be minor. So, you know, as far as how would you, you know, how could one trade this? Well, it's a wedge top. And when you get a wedge, typically you get two legs in the opposite direction. You know, the bulls tried here, they tried here, they tried here. Well, 
it's probably going to try the opposite direction. Right. And if you think about, you know, why do cell climaxes or biclimaxes happen, traders get exhausted. So, you know, it, it, if you get a breakout and sideways breakout, sideways, you know, some selling pressure and another breakout, more and more traders start stepping aside and they want to see a pullback. Well, when they start to see three consecutive bear bars, they're going to wait. Right. See more bear bars, they're going to wait. Then, you know, what happened here? This changed the characteristic. Right. So if you can pretend like these don't exist for a minute, you're thinking, you know, maybe it's a trading range, maybe we're testing in the middle. Right. And, you know, this is two legs down. One leg, it, I mean, technically it could be a high one buy, it's a variant. Right. Here's a high two. And then you see this, as soon as this bar closed on its low, strong breakout, another big bear bar, another big bear bar. And you're selling here, stop up here, betting on at least a second leg down, which you right. got here. Right. And, you know, if you look at this area over here, traders will sell this close, betting on the second leg. And if you're, you know, most traders are going to assume that the gap's going to close. So this kind of goes into that whole, should you get out of a stop entry or should you right. re-enter? And it just, you start to kind of evolve over time. Traders are probably, if they're short, if they didn't get out back to low close, they're probably going to exit somewhere down here. Right. Anticipating that we're going to at least close this gap. Right. So in, in a situation like this, where let's say uh, you decide on 27, which is a second, the second bear bar, you decide that we're probably going to get a second leg down. It's changing the characteristic of, of the move down. Now, I think it was one of your more recent videos where you said, if you're selling here, you're looking for one times your risk. But in order to get one times your risk, or let's say, actually, let's make it more clear and make it the 20, uh, the 28 close, which is the third bear bar. Okay, right here. So in order to make one times your risk, you have to bet on a break below a trading range. Mm -hmm. And so are you 60% certain that you'll get one times your risk when you're expecting a break below today's low, when we've already rallied? And because we had a strong rally on the open, we're probably not going to be in a big bear trend. It's probably going to remain a trading range, even if we pull back a bit. So in that, in that scenario, are you allowed, allowed, I'm saying allowed with math, yeah, okay. are you allowed mathematically to take that, um, that 28 closed cell, knowing that well, it's lower in a trading range? That is the, you know, again, it, it gets into, you can, you alter the trader's equation based on, you know, the probability is always set. And you alter it based on your stop and your and your target. And you can, you know, if I sell this close and put my stop one tick above, I've altered my trader's equation right. by moving my stop. And so, it, it, and that's, and I'm glad you said that because that's that's one really good point. And that is, whenever you're risking more, especially at the bottom of the range, you have to be able to manage the trade properly right because you're right you don't know is this a sell climax is this going to be you know for one this channel is fairly tight and that does increase the chances that the bulls are going to have to go sideways you know for some time but you could easily have a bull bar get more down so get a breakout and then what if you went sideways for 20 bars or 30 bars hmm. you know at, at that point you would have, you know, you, you would need to get out. Right. So can you sell this close, put your stop up here? Sure. And you're doing that betting on a second leg down three or four, you know, three or four second bull bars. Can you sell, you know, can you, you know, like right here though, and this is kind of where it goes to trade management. Yeah. Do you really want to be short? Exactly. Like your point before. Yeah. Stop one tick below here. Probably not. Right. I don't know, you know, and this is where it goes into it. You know, I would rather, if I'm going to sell down here, I don't know if I want my stop down here. Right. So what I'd rather do is if I'm going to bet on a breakout, I'd rather wait for a second entry and put my stop one tick above the bar. Right. Because if I'm selling below this bar or even this bar, you know, this bar is a micro channel one, two, it's four bar micro channel doji. We tried to break out above bad high one. Now we get another bear bar. Well, think about the math. You have to assume most break, you know, even right here, there's probably a 40% chance, maybe higher that we're going to get a downside breakout. So if I right. sell below and put my stop above, I have a defined risk. 
I'm certainly got more than twice my risk on terms of risk reward, and I've got at least a 40% probability. Hmm. So the math makes sense. Right. And, you know, that, that's why, you know, that's where it kind of comes into most people, and this is where you have to be flexible on the day and, and kind of the market cycle. Most people, they want to get good at breakouts. They want to get good at stop entries. You know, one thing, instead of the best thing you can do is start to get into the mindset of what's the best and, you know, what is the best setup I should take in terms of, for math, in terms of that context. Right. And, you know, again, if you can, it's generally, if you're betting on a breakout, it's better to limit your risk reward or limit your risk if you can. Right. And so, of, yeah. Yeah. And, and another, to your point, it's that if you end up at bar uh, 32 or 33, you're at the bottom of the trading range. Even if we're assuming, and tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, but even if we're assuming that it's neutral, like obviously low in the trading range, you're going to assume that there's a little bit of upward bias, but let's assume that it's, it might be a trading range, but because the breakout to the downside is so strong, it may be the start of a, a, bear, a bear swing and we get a few pushes sure. down. But let's assume neutrality. Um, you got to you gotta assume you're, you're short right now after the second leg down. So you had the first leg down, 26, 27, 28. You have another leg down, 31, 32, 33, shrinking bodies at the bottom of a potential trading range. If you assume neutrality, 33% chance we're going to bounce, 33% chance we're going to go sideways. 33% chance we're going to continue lower. So there's a 66% chance that you'll probably get some sideways action, either a low two or, or some, some um, trading range where you'll be able to re-enter if you need to. So, and so correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like, why keep your stop above 30 and yeah. hope that it goes lower? Why not exit, limit your risk, and then re-enter if it continues lower? Does that make sense? That makes, you know, it, okay. And that, that goes into, let's use this as an example. You have a wedge top, so you move, you know, breakout, new breakout, move your stop, another breakout. Well, every one of these increase the chances, the odds increase of the breakout failing. You know, just like here's a cell climb, you know, at some point one of these cell climbs is gonna fail. And right. that, you know, it could fail by going just sideways. Mm -hmm. So if you're long up here and you're thinking, gee, you know, maybe this is a 50-50 chance it's gonna fail, why wouldn't you get out right here? Right. You start selling the close. It's the same thing as at some point, I know that this is strong enough. You may get a second leg. Well, at some point, the market's going to test one of these highs. Right. It may not be here. It may go down one more and test up again. That's why final flags, you know, here's a final flag. You know, it's, you get a breakout. Are we going to get back in this range? Maybe, but here's sideways, broke to the downside and reversed up. So you're better off getting out at one of the lows. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And then, and to this point, there was um, back at the uh, March seventeenth, which was which was Friday. I think I put it again. Yeah. So the the climax versus the Forrest Gump dilemma on bar forty eight and fifty two, where if you were long from thirty six, let's say you bought thirty six, but you stopped below uh, thirty four, and you were willing to sit through that pullback, that the pullback to the moving average. Now, you. Could that's reasonable. Yeah. So then you, but then you see 48 and you're like, it's a stronger breakout. Uh, you have three, three bull bars. Is that a situation where you say, let me shut off my brain and it's a big bull bar closing on its high. Let me buy the high. Mm -hmm. uh, and same with, um, I think I said 52, which is another bull bar closing on its high. At what point do you say, okay, breakouts are probably gonna start failing. We might be, it's a third push up, maybe a fourth push up. At what point do you say, I'm not gonna take these buys in a bull trend, I'm going to wait for a pullback. And, or if you're long, at what point do you say, this is, this looks like it may pull back or fail. And I'm going to, I'm going to take profits here. Yeah. It, it, and that goes into, again, the math changes with every bar right. and it goes into a surprise. So here, you know, and there's many ways you can manage. I could buy this close. I know my risk. It was down here. So if I calculate my, my math, maybe I go for, I could go for twice my risk. So I put my stop, you know, measure move from here to here twice up here and maybe i get out somewhere up here or i could say i'm just going to trail so you get a strong breakout the first thing i would say is was i expecting this right i look at this i would tell you gee that that's a little bit of a surprise a surprise means second leg mm -hmm. you know a successful breakout is a second leg right and 
since that's a strong enough surprise and a strong enough breakout for at least a second leg up, the key word is at least a second leg. It right. could be one bar, it could be 20 bars. And when you see this, it all goes into risk reward. You know, you, you've heard I'll talk about it. You can't, you know, would you risk a hundred points to make one tick? You can, but then you, can, you know, yeah. eventually it's a losing strategy. Great. Well, if my stop is if I bought here, even bought above this bar, stop down here, and now my price is up here, you know. At some point, I have to say, okay, am I really willing to risk all the way down to here to make one or two points? Right. And at some point, the math doesn't make sense. Hmm. Therefore, if you're going to be in the trade, you have to, the math always needs to, it needs to work. So, right. If you're long up here, you can do, you know, there's only really a few ways you can make the math work if you tighten your stop. So, I can either, I can tighten my stop below this bar, I can tighten it below here, anywhere. You know, at this point, Three second bull bars. I think there's going to be a second leg. I could buy this close, put a stop down here, and bet there's going to be a second leg. And you know, if I'm long here, it's a matter of do you think there's going to be a retest back down here? I, there probably will be. I mean, look at this. Every time we were here's the moving average, it's pulling back to the moving average every time. Right. Strong breakout. It's been rallying for many bars. Hmm. Probably going to pull back to the moving average. Therefore. It makes sense to just go ahead and exit below a bar. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. So, um, the so I'm gonna summarize what you said, and then you correct me again if, sure. if I if I misquote you. So, in this scenario, different than the last image I showed you or that you had up there, is that on bar 48, when we see 35, 36, we're buying the close, and then you see 48, you're reassessing the probability to say at this moment. At 48, it's a surprise. So if my right. stop is below 48 or below 46, now I actually do think that there are there is a good chance that we're going to get a second leg up. So I I do want to stay long at this moment. It's the same as buying now, and I think it's worth it because it's a surprise. So we probably will get a second leg up. Whereas in the other the other images we we talked about, it was weakening. It was at the bottom of a trading range, and at that moment you're like, I'm not going to keep my stop above that leg because I don't think that there's a chance we're going to get a second leg from this. And we're going to break below a trading range. So in this specific instance, at 48, you're saying it's a surprise. So I do want to stay long here because it makes sense to keep my stop where it is and wait for a second leg up. But then on 52, you're saying, well, that's a good looking bull bar, but where's my stop? It's now below below 40, uh, 46. That's way too much a risk because I don't think we're going to get an equal distance up from here. So now it makes sense to lighten up. Does that make sense? That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. And it, it works the same way, you know, that works the same way in a trading range. If you're selling, you know, you sell this close, stop, you know, you sell your stop up here and you get a breakout to the downside. Well, now your risk is increased. Well, the minute you don't think that the math works or the risk is too big to mm. the profit potential, you get out of the trade. I mean, you can look at it right here. You had a micro double bottom. So we went down, pulled back, went down again at the bottom of a trading range. There's a reason why this bar just went up the next bar. There's a reason. Here it went up. It, it's the same logic that we're talking about. And that is, you know, up here, if you're long and your stops down here, and it's a we broke above this high, we're trying to break above the high yesterday again, we're starting to fail. At some point, it, the easiest way to to better the math is to just get out below the prior bar. Right. Exactly. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to protect, yeah, you want to protect the, the profit you have or more importantly, most of the time the market's not 60%. So you don't want to use a wide stop. You, you don't want that risk reward. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So that actually kind of um, a level moment from that. So that makes sure. a lot of sense. So 53, for example, you might say, I'm not certain that we're going to get a second leg up. So like, that's the same size as that, that entire leg. But it may be a small pullback will trend. It may not pull back four ticks or two points below the bar. So I'll limit my risk by putting it to two points below the bar in case we continue higher and grind higher in a small pullback will trend. But I'm going to limit my risk because it doesn't make sense mathematically to keep my stop all the way below the leg because we're probably not going to get an equal distance up. But we may grind higher. And if it's a small pullback will trend, it shouldn't fall two points, four points below. So that's why I'm going to tighten my stop two points below a bull bar or exit below a bear bar. 
that makes sense that, that makes perfect sense hmm. okay that makes a lot of sense okay and then two more sections and then and then we're done um the next yeah. one is small pullback bull trends oh sorry uh, pull, uh we can kind of go quickly over this pull back to the ma i was going to ask about bar 47 um two legs yeah. down to the moving average and if you if you're buying a pullback in a bull trend and you see 48 are you exiting below 49 because you're disappointed or are you trusting the stop and i guess that goes back to what we've been talking about i have a little bit more clarity on on your perspective on this so if you think that the odds are that we're going to continue higher based on where your stop is then it's okay to stay long and respect yeah, your stop. Let's, let's talk about that it's it's the context of the breakout is this, right. is this a surprise right you know, were you expecting that breakout case in point well, this is a clearly a surprise move right Therefore, you know the odds are it's going to go higher and you know first off as far as buying a pullback to the moving average just so while we're, we're on the subject why wouldn't you buy here well at some point this happens a lot where you get consecutive sell climaxes and the, the rally looks fairly weak and you start to go sideways for 10 plus bars and you start to form a tight trading range and whenever that happens it's very important to be aware of you know look for some sort of fail breakout broke to the downside and reversed up first bar first close below the moving average of many bars bull bar closing on its high so the first thing i would think through is how do i structure the trade and in many ways, I'm going to buy above this bar. I can either put my stop below here, below here, or all the way down here. Obviously, I probably shouldn't use the stop all the way down here because it's bad risk reward. Therefore, you know, maybe I'll put it here, maybe I'll put it here. I want to, uh, you know, I'm in a trading range, so I know the probability is 50 50. Therefore, what I want to do is I want to tighten my risk to give it, to give myself a strong risk reward for right. the 50 50, you know, probability. Right. When I see this strong bull bar, I'm thinking, you know, gee, that's that's good. I wouldn't I wasn't expecting that. And but the but the first piece I would say, so it's a surprise. However, look what it's breaking out of. Many it's breaking out of many bars. However, is this breaking above all the bars to the left? Hmm. It's not. It's not. Yeah. Therefore, you're gonna have some traders sell this high, they'll sell here, and they're disappointed. Right. Anything that's a surprise. Is a disappointment to the other side hmm. so this is disappointing for the bears so some bears maybe they sold here betting one failed you know if they could you know some sort of retracement maybe they sell more higher and let's get out break even you know that happens all the time and you know bears will sell here disappointed by this bar and if they're disappointed they may look to get out with a small loss possible which means a pullback and right. bulls they know it's a trading range, so they're probably thinking, you know, gee, you know, first the bulls very well may scalp out here, but the bulls, you know, would you buy this close and put your stop down here? Well, it's a surprise, but look to the left. You know, what's the probability we break above this trading range? Hmm. I don't know if it's sixty percent. Therefore, some bulls will look to buy a fifty percent pullback to have a stronger risk reward. Right. So you know that kind of gets into the subject of in a trading range and at this point it's clearly a trading range and it does have an upward bias because it, it you know it maybe there's a 55 percent chance you get trend resumption right or, you know is it 55 is it 53 it's slightly better for the bulls right so in, in this situation it's again it's assessing the probability of we're in the middle of a trading range and 48 is a surprise and maybe because it's in the middle of a trading range you treat it as a gift and you say I, I bought about 47. I didn't expect 48, but even a second leg up might just be a very small second leg up because we're in the middle of a trading range. So I might not get one R if I put my stop below, keep my stop below 45. So I'm going to take it off, take off my position, and I'll look to buy again at a 50% pullback to to make the math work again. Is that is, is that something that makes sense to do? Makes perfect sense. Okay, so it's always it's always judging the math based on your parameters within a given context so in the other scenarios it's a strong breakout breaking out of everything second leg down could go very far here we're in the middle of a trading range so even a small second leg up might not be enough to hold because it might be a couple ticks above the prior high we're in the middle of a trading range and so the math may not make sense to keep your stop all the way below the breakout bar looking for a marginal second leg up because of the context that we're in 
exactly right? and you know that and this this sub that what we're doing right here when you're and this is one thing when you start thinking and analyzing the math on every trade mm. it should be more it's you should feel more fatigued you should feel it's more right. difficult and that's what's for especially people starting out it's very important to get into the habit of thinking through the risk reward and the math on every bar and understanding mm. that it's going to change at every second and then that's just, you know, I can't stress that enough. That's super, your math is not, I mean, everybody knows it, but your math, and this is an easy example, your math is not the same here when you're long here as it is here. Hmm. It's different and it changes with every bar. Yeah, just, and that's just a quick point on that that I found interesting. Um, I was watching a, a different podcast and there was like, it's, it's talking about how dynamic risk is. And that most people think of risk as, I'm putting my entry here, my stop here, and my target here, and that's the risk and the reward. But this person I was listening to was saying, well, risk, there's also risk before the trade in the sense that how are you yeah. feeling today? What, um, like, what's your mental state? If you're, if you're feeling that you're not at your best, then you have to decrease the probability because you're not going to make good decisions. And just like there's risk and reward and probability before you start trading, once you're in the trade, every tick past that entry point is not, well, I'm just going to trust the math of the initial entry is that you have to think about yourself exiting and re-entering at every single tick. And would I be willing to re to buy right now? Would I be willing to buy right now? And so risk and probability and reward is a very dynamic process that, that extends past just the initial entry and stop and target. Everything works against you. That's mm -hmm. and yes, that's a good point. It, whether that's emotion and sleep well last night yeah you know and, and those are all factors you have to weigh because again it's 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 you're competing against computers yeah and al says like your edge is so small and that's why he says he takes less trades at the end of the day because he's like if my edge is marginal and i'm feeling a little bit tired i'm not going to force stuff at the end of the day because so i'm then, doing my best and think about why he says that in the end of the day most most of the time the market goes sideways and, you know, if, if the market's going sideways, your risk reward is bad. There's a video out released. He, I think he's, he's going to Europe at the beginning of April doing a, uh, but he released a video with, uh, I think his name is like Trader Tom on YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had to do a scalping. And the, the biggest takeaway I would suggest from that video is what I was explaining is the risk reward in a trading range is poor and you have 50% math. So in a trading range, you don't have great risk reward and you're mad and if you're scalping you know maybe there's a 50 50 chance it goes up or down therefore mm -hmm. you have to alter you gotta use a wide stop and you know scale in and all that is more fatiguing and right. at the end of the day if you're slightly wrong on your read that's the difference between winning and losing versus mm -hmm. one stop entry you're usually not going to get i mean even look here you know maybe here's a good stop entry but you have to be quick to get out. It's just most time at the end of the day, there's not decent swing trades because there's right. a lack of time. Right. And so when the, when the math becomes harder, it, it's more fatiguing. And, sure. and if you're already tired, then you, you might've lost your edge. You may not be worth taking the trade in the first place. Absolutely. Hmm. Okay. So now it's actually two more sections, uh, small pullback bull trends. That's something that um, I think beginner intermediate, uh, doesn't matter what level. I think that's something that's hard to, to um to trade properly in my opinion and i've noticed a lot of people talking about how they find it difficult to to take trades in small pullback bull trends so i have a couple examples of that and then just two sections on counter trend trading and that's it yeah. so can you talk about like how you how you'd approach uh at a certain point where you're like a pullback's not coming they're very small how do you how do you engage with that and what are your parameters yeah so first piece whenever you have a gap up the the odds favor a pullback to the moving average and you have two legs down and the first thing and it's a wedge so one two three and the first thing you don't know is while it's probably not going to be a bear trend day and you, you don't know if it's going to be a bull trend or a uh, trading range odds typically favor a trading range and the first thing you have to pay attention to is the strength so right here this is quite a few bull bars up and while if you bought here, and this kind of goes into the managing of trades, in general, buying here and putting your stop down here 
and you know is it's bad risk reward. Now it's okay to do if you know that if you're if you're able to manage the trade knowing to get out. So there's a 60% chance you're going a little bit higher. Is it going to break above the high of the day? Maybe. And it, it may do this, it may not, it may just go sideways. Hmm. And knowing when to get out is critical. I mean, if it if it did this over here, probably better to get out. Hmm. And you don't know it's going to be a small pullback bull trend day at the time. But if you 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 know it's reasonable to buy this close, stop down here, maybe down here. The key is the risk is big and you got to know when to get out. So it doesn't really matter if your stop's here or here, you got to be able to get out. And you hold below this and you get a strong bull bar here. And it goes back to that surprise question. When you look at this bar, you're thinking, okay, we broke above a double top. So this is a trading range. Now we may get a measured move of this range. And the next question I would say is, okay, is that is this bull bar, is this surprising? And I would say this, uh, yeah. I'm surprised it's probably gonna go for a second leg. And you know, it's you know, sure it's testing this high, but who knows? And then you get another big bull bar. So now we have consecutive bull bars breaking above the entire day's range. Now you have to be open to the potential of we have this measure move target going up. Maybe we'll get a measure move from the low of the day to the open. That's the first target projecting up or the low of the day to the high. Right. And when you see these two bull bars, you know, the, the main thing I would focus on is, okay, I'm long. Maybe I'll put my stop below here. First reversal down is probably going to fail. Here's a second reversal down. But is this strong enough? Is this strong enough to reverse this? Probably not. Hmm. Therefore, it's probably going higher. So now we're starting to rally. And this is what gets challenging for traders is everybody wants to buy the pullback, especially when the market starts doing this. It's getting weak. You know, buy climax, pause, buy climax, pause, second buy climax. You're probably going to get a few legs down in the moving average. Right. So what does everyone want to do? Naturally, they want to go back to this and they want to buy at the moving average. Right. And, but you don't get that. So as far as, and this is, this is, this is the, what's really important about being able to trade small is it's important to, you hear I'll say this, especially in the books, you know, especially if you can trade a stop intraday. You know, buy at least a 20% position size here and put your stop in just to be in the trade. Right. You know, just to, to be able to be in. And the next thing I would do is, is weigh the reversals. You know, do I want to get out here? I think there's nothing wrong with getting out here right. and looking to buy lower. And, you know, at some point it's also you buy this close, put your stop down here. You've got a nice, decent profit. You want to take the profit. And, you know, I think it's what typically happens in a bull trend or small pullback bull trend is, you know, everybody wants to buy at the moving average and people will inevitably, you know, they'll say, oh, this is, you know, it's a buy climax, it's too strong, I'm going to wait for a pullback. And they'll say, well, this isn't at the moving average, hmm. maybe it's a trap, maybe we'll get a second leg to the moving average. And they watch this go up and up and up. And then they're thinking, finally, it's a wedge top here, here, and here two legs to the moving average. So I'll just buy the stop entry to the moving average and you don't get it. Right. And then same thing. Now they're saying, oh, okay. So now it's a wedge, you know, here, here, and here. So then what are they going to do? They're going to buy at the moving average. And what they fail to realize is you're buying here at the moving average, but is the market in a bull trend or is it in a trading range? And I'm a day. So if I buy at this, you know, here, and this is where it goes into weighing probabilities, I'm buying the middle of the past, what, 10 bars? Hmm. So what's the odds? This goes back to Al's video on trading ranges. If I buy this close, I can probably buy more below this bar and make money. So if I right. buy here and buy more here and get out, it's profitable strategy. But if I buy this close, put my stop below, what's my goal? And that's what happens. I think that happens a lot for people, especially starting out, is they want to wait for the pullback and they think they're doing the right thing, you know, second entry pullback and the moving average, I should buy. And they end up buying at the bottom, you know, late in the day and they get stopped out. And instead of, you know, even though it's hard to buy again right here, I'm not recommending it, hmm. but they, they're not able to get back in. Right. And they miss out on this entire move instead of just recognizing, you know, this is where the whole Al says, 
Forrest Gump would be a better trader than Albert Einstein because Forrest mm -hmm. Gump would just say, I need to buy the clothes and, you know, just be, you know, dumb about it. And, you know, you don't get out here. The first person is going to fail. And, you know, maybe you get out somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I think as people develop, they start to realize a bunch of small pieces and, you know, they would, you know, this is a buy climax after a wedge top, probably going to pull back. Traders would rather get out on momentum than right. get out below bear bar. Right. And I guess if you're sure if you're willing to hold long betting on a small pullback bull trend and you have your stop below the the prior swing low, then there's no if you're willing to keep that stop at the swing low, um, like let's say you you have your stop below 30 and you see 30 uh, 36, 37, or you see 42 and your stop is still below 30. If you are in fact willing to keep your stop below 30, there's no harm in exiting on the 41, 42 close and then buying one of the bear bars near the moving average because you are willing to keep your stop there anyways, then there's no harm in exiting on momentum and buying weak bear closes, right? Sure. And, and you hear, I'll talk a lot about uh, entering on smaller time frames, and, you know, I, I don't want to get give people the wrong impression but one thing he does is and it's because he can infer it on a the higher time frame is this is a two-legged pullback right so if this is a strong trend then i could pull up a 10 you know a two minute chart and maybe use a 10 minute moving average and there's probably going to be a second entry buy somewhere that's right. probable, and you could buy it scalp out but like right here that's exactly what people did is it's, you know, they want to buy a pullback. They know the pullback is going to be brief. So they start buying closes down here. Mm -hmm. Confident that it's going to go higher. Right. Mm -hmm. I think, I think the next two are a little bit harder. Um, exactly. I was going to say that that's kind of, you know, whenever you see this, it's a, you, you got a pretty good chance. Uh, it's kind of like what happened on that Fed report day when you get the strong two bar breakout that reversed the market back up after the Fed report. There's a, there's a strong chance you're going higher and it, right. it, makes, it makes it definitely easier to trade, but the risk mm -hmm. is bigger. So you're paying for more risk with more certainty here. It's a little bit more tricky. And you know, the, the first thing I would say is again, you have a gap up and what you should always weigh is, you know, I'll, I'll have that three or 400, uh, maybe three or 4,000, you know, it's that PowerPoint with all the slides on it. Right. And, and he talks about if you look at gap ups, the, the most likely thing is a pullback to the moving average. You know, everyone knows there's a 99.9% .9 chance you're going to touch the moving average on a day. So naturally on the open, everybody wants to buy the moving average. Right. And whenever you see this, here's a strong breakout. Well, it's a big bull bar and then you get a bear bar. What's the problem with it though? Well, Here's a push up, here's a push up, here's another one. So it's a wedge top. And you start thinking, well, you know, I could probably buy the moving average around the same price. Right. And if you're not careful, you can say you can look to buy the moving average and you don't get to buy until all the way over here. Right. Now, if that's the case, that's okay to do. I mean, it's okay to understand that buying here is different than buying here. Right. So why is that? Well, you're not at the end of the day and look at the risk. It's mm. much smaller. Right. And, you know, the odds are it's still probably going to test these highs. So as far as, you know, what do you do in between here? The first thing you have to do is recognize it's a tight channel. I shouldn't sell. And that's one thing about right. always in. And one thing that's worth mentioning is it's, if you can eliminate what you shouldn't do, mm. kind of like a decision tree. So, Al, Al talks about binary decisions. Is it a bull trend or a trading range? And the reason he does that is if he says trading range, then it allows him to think through what should I do in a trading range? And if it's a trend, then okay, what should you not do? Don't sell. Right. So if you just, if you eliminate selling off the table and you only look to buy, then at least you're not gonna, you're not gonna be selling below bars and you know taking lots of small losses. Hmm. The next thing you could do is start to realize, you know, maybe you just, you wait for a pullback and you buy above a bull bar and you put your stop, you know, you put your stop down here. You could do that. Or you, if you can infer, if you can kind of understand what's going on, you start saying that, gee, this pullback from here to here was 
two or three points. I'm going to buy a two or three point mm. pullback from the high of this bar and buy down here and scalp out. Right. And, you know, maybe you say this rally was X amount of points. So if we go, you know, X a point amount of points lower, or when we start to turn down this bear bar, traders are going to buy. And, right. you know, why do traders buy this close? It's a second leg down. So if you, the, the first thing is understanding small pullback bull trends, why did they happen? And that goes back to really all of that information. The more you can understand why, because there's always a rational reason in terms of probabilities and the way people trade, why, why things happen. And if you can really understand why that is, and, and he explains that a lot better in the books, probably right. just because there's more, I mean, you, you can only say so much in a video. Right. So that's definitely worth figuring out, but small pullback bull trends, they're not, everybody wants this. Most of the time that doesn't happen. Right. It does something in the middle. It's a strong breakout, but it's following this. It could be, you know, a backing or a buy climax and it could fail. So in a small pullback bull trend, it's, it, it somewhat looks like a leg in a trading range, like here. However, they're getting gaps and the channel up is so tight that people aren't selling. But the bulls don't want to buy new highs so what do they do? They sell out longs and look to buy pullbacks. So the bears, they know that. So that what do the bears do? The bears are selling above bars for scalps. Hmm. So, you know, small pullback bull trends, I think are one of, in general, the most challenging. And if you can just understand the logic that it's, it's a trend that's tight, so you shouldn't buy. The next thing you could do is flip to a 15 minute chart. You know, 15 minute hmm. chart may be consecutive bull bars. And again, if you have the ability to trade different position sizes, go to a 15 minute chart, maybe buy the close for your stop down here and just hold for the rest of the day. Right. Yeah. And I think uh, something, something Al mentioned in, um, in the third book reversals, he was saying, anytime you're in a tight channel, there sure. are going to be bears selling. They're always forming some kind of yes. potential top. And what you should do as a beginner is see where those bears would be selling in a tight channel and enter where they're, well, they're, where, where they will be buying back their shorts. So as long as you can use trade small enough and use the correct stop, it might be okay to, to buy where those weak bears are exiting and sure. stay in the trend as long as you can using the correct stop, as long as you can trade small enough. Yes, that's exactly it. And I would just, you know, one thing I would say with all that is it's also important to understand that these bear bars are not necessarily, these aren't bears selling the clothes and failing. Right. You know, just because you get a big bear bar doesn't mean traders, you know, that, that could be people selling intra bar and then taking profits right at the end. Right. You know, and also one thing Al talks about, and it's kind of, it makes sense is in part this bar right here. You know, often you'll have trader, maybe this is a better bar. You'll often have one side purposely make the bar too big to sell right? because it makes the risk reward bad. So, right. you know, you may have institutional firms sell aggressively and they want to buy, but they're selling to dry, you know, make it a bad stop entry and then buy seconds later. Right. And I think, um, the, the, those vacuums like bar 43, it could also just be an absence of buyers who are waiting for a better price. And so it gets, they get sucked into their price for them to buy and not necessarily an area for people to initiate shorts. You know, I'm glad you said that. And that happens if you look at a trading range and you know, maybe, maybe we can talk more about that another time is yeah. you see a lot of times you'll see a breakout that'll, you know, it'll be a breakout bar that's in the middle of the range and it's strong enough for a second leg. But, but it's almost, it, there's something wrong with it. Right. And it's exactly what you said. A lot of times in a trading range, it's a vacuum. It's, it's one side stepping aside and driving the market to an extreme for it to reverse. Hmm. So I'm very glad you said that. That's, yeah, I agree with you completely. And um, I think there's one more underneath sure. that. That one's like, the, I think that was a really tough day. Almost. Yeah, this one was like, uh, so this is probably another situation where you see the pullbacks are one tick or um, one bar. And if you're betting on a small pullback bull trend, you're betting that the pullbacks will be small. So you use the appropriate stop, you buy a small position, 
use the right stop and and wait for like I think there's also with these tight channels, do you think that if you want to initiate a long here, that you use the correct stop and the first pull pullback to the moving average you expect will be minor, and then you can exit on the test of the extreme instead of trying to exit below bars in a small pullback will trend. Because if it's a bad sell, you also don't necessarily want to be exiting your position when you think that every pullback will be bought. It's it kind of gets into the you've heard I'll talk about the skunks the skunk stop. Yeah. And when you get out, you're you're stopping yourself out. You can stop yourself out at the high of the move. Right. It's the same as stopping yourself out below a bar. Right. And you know, it's like this. Two consecutive bear bar. This getting out here is a skunk entry because you're in essence getting out at a 50% pullback of a strong enough breakout for a second leg. Right. Getting out below here, you know, and and, and you can help kind of identify these by looking at the next bar, you know, look at the open of this bar. It didn't even go one tick below, went straight up. So what does that tell you? When this bar closed the way it did, everybody right. aggressively bought. Right. You look at this bar, why did this bar gap down and aggressively go up? And then this bar aggressively go down. That's what you're talking about. Most traders, they see this breakout. They know the first verse is gonna fail. They look to get out here. They're disappointed by the tight trading range. And, you know, so it's kind of, this is the trading range. So is it going to be a pullback in this bull trend or a reversal? Well, it probably still favors a pullback and it leaves sideways. So if you're, since it's always in long and it probably never went always in short, it may not be such a bad idea to look to buy pullbacks. Therefore, you see a big bear bar, traders buy. You see another bar, traders buy, traders buy. I would recommend most people doing that because it's really easy to get trapped into, you know, a lot of times waiting for a stop entry, even though you can miss moves, it can, you can also avoid getting into a bad position. So right. instead of selling and just selling and selling and getting a huge loss, if I wait for a credible stop entry, there's never, there's never a reasonable one to take. Right. It's kind of that same concept. And as far as this move, you know, overall day, yeah, you get a strong breakout and you start to go sideways. It's, it's a two-legged pullback. And it's also, you know, you can call it a double bottom, you can call it a wedge, one, two, three, two legs down. And there's many ways you can infer what's going on. But more importantly, and, and there's computers will see it many different ways, but it's, it's two legs. We went sideways, we're breaking above and you know, again, at this point, do you want to, you know, do you really want to buy? You're probably not. And a lot of scalpers hate small pullback bull trends. You've probably heard out say that. And the reason is the probability is not quite high enough to buy. And you want to buy, you want to buy lower. So it's different, you know, buying this close or buying this close, using a wide stop and scaling and lower and scalping out. That's pretty good math behind it. Right. But buying up here, where's your stop? You know, is it down mm -hmm. here? It's still more challenging. And it, you know, right. you, can, you can take, you can buy below every bull, every bull bar, but it's, it's just overall more difficult. Yeah. And I think, I think what's probably the biggest takeaway, and I think you mentioned it earlier, is it's also enough, I think, that as, as a beginner or even intermediate, anyone struggling with small pullback bull trends, that it might be, it might be enough to just understand that I should not be selling and save your mental capital and save your capital for trades that are more clear. And if you're not good at small pullback bull trends, then just don't sell, just don't sell and save your money. And tomorrow will be more clear and small pullback bull trends happen once or twice a month. So every other day of the month, there's going to be clear opportunities. And so maybe that's, maybe that's a, a, a message as well is just try to save your money and don't take bad trades. It, this goes back, there's an ask out video on this and it probably, I think the title is probably getting rid of losses or something like that. But the point I made was one of the most important things you can do is realize most people have enough winning trades to be profitable. The problem is they have too many just stupid trades for lack of words. The math isn't great. It's buying too high in a trading range, selling too low. And those eat away all the good trades. So if you, if one could focus on as you just said, it's not, you know, not doing the stupid things in a small pullback bull trend. You could focus on 
getting rid of those losses that you know you shouldn't have taken, one's probably going to have enough winning trades to do well. Hmm. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's a really good takeaway. Um, and then the, one more chart sure. underneath. So this was my question for you for this one was bar 24 versus bar 35. So sure. we're kind of trend in a tight channel. Uh, 24 is the minor reversal because we haven't broken above a significant trend line yet. Is, is 24 something that you would, that you take personally or well, a, like in a tight channel buying like yeah, like, consecutive climaxes or anything like that? Or do you wait for the, for the trend line break and then the buy and, and how do you treat them differently? How do you manage them differently? So the first is, you am glad you said it's tight channel consecutive sell climaxes. And the first question is, what's the trader's goal? And, you know, the next thing is, I think people really have to focus on is, it's, it's, it's really difficult when you're starting out because you look and say, it's a big up bar, traders are buying. Well, what you have to think through though is, are traders buying this close or were traders buying these lows mm. and aggressively buying and you Good know point. for example some traders this bar is probably too big and you could you could buy it and there's and this goes into that management you know buying this bar stop down here and going you know going for twice your risk and going to walmart probably not a great trade right but if you buy this close and then you're you know you did you wanted a big bar then this bar is weak and then this bar right. is to get out now you're you're increasing your probability by managing the trade. Now the reality is, you know, if you take if you take the analogy, and, and Al's got a really good section in reversals in his third book. I mean, he really kind of breaks down the logic of why traders want a major trend reversal, hmm. and it's really it's it's worth reading. But this is too tight where you really want to see a strong trend line break. This might be strong enough, and then you get a new another leg down. And, you know, whether that's this bar, even though there's a lot of overlap or, you know, maybe it's weighing towards here. Right. And the problem with this is one can buy it. However, you know, they buy it, stop down here, maybe the target's up here. The risk reward isn't great. Right. And if they get, you know, they've got a few choices. They can get out quickly and then look to buy again, maybe here, or, you know, maybe you're kind of forming a triangle then maybe they buy closes here. Some right. traders will buy and buy more below these bars. Right. So, you know, in general, most traders are better off waiting for a trend line break, some sort of test of the moving average, maybe a close above the moving average, and then looking for a retest and then looking to buy. Right. I think the 24 buy, I th what you said makes sense, is that it may be bulls buying it may be bears ex exiting at the extreme at the 22 low. It may be bulls buying um, at the 22 low. But if you're buying about 24, the first thing is that you have to assume it's minor. Sure. So that has to play a role in the math. And which means you might have to be quick to, to exit if disappointed, mm -hmm. right? Sure. And whereas, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, whereas when you, once you get a trend line break, it's not necessarily clear, but it could be strong enough to be a major reversal. And then you see 35, or like you mentioned, it could be a triangle and you start buying closes on the way up. Then you can start using math based on a potential major reversal. But it's probably important that if you do buy the consecutive climax one, which is something I struggle with a little bit still, is that if I'm buying 24, you have to know and assume it's not a Walmart type trade. It's, it's a minor. So you have to be very quick to exit. Yeah. And, and I would add with that, you know, you have to, under, you know, a minor reversal is a minor change in the trend so it's it could be a trading range it could be a bear flag and right. a major reversal implies bear trend to bull trend bull trend to bear trend and you've heard i'll talk about this in the books of the videos but major trend reversals it's kind of a it's probably not the right name for it right you know and i mean it makes sense but most reversals are minor and you really need the evolution of the trading range before you are likely to get a reversal. And right. then even then, most of the time, this doesn't happen. Most of the time the market goes sideways. So even right. though you have executive sell climax is all the way down, the odds favor sideways. It doesn't favor a strong bull trend. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think the second one's also a successful major reversal. Did I get did I put a second one in there? 
or is that the last one? Six one. Yeah, I think there's some. Yeah, there. So this was another example of a major reversal that ended up being enough for a swing. But this one, it looks like the trend line break is actually a little bit more clear above the moving average, created a gap bar on 20 on 26. So maybe in this scenario, like here, bar 20 was a final flag reversal. Um, is that would you still consider that consider that to be a, a minor situation where you should still probably expect a trading range here? Yeah, above 20. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, this is consecutive sell climaxes. So you know, the main thing I'd be thinking is we're probably going to test back into this area. Right. However, you know, how high up do we go? I mean, is this a credible low of the day? Sure. Now we could we could go above it and go sideways from any bars. I mean, we could break strong into the upside. There's always a chance. Right. A minor reversal break strong into the upside. However, this is what you should expect, and that is you get a breakout bar sideways, another bull bar, and then sideways. Right. So, and compare would, that to 53, which is not a great stop entry, but 53 and then 54, 55 break above the moving average. That's when you can start looking for a potential, not major necessarily, like you mentioned, not, it's not major, but it, it could lead to, uh, it has enough distance to be a meaningful swing up to test extremes. Yes. So you've been sideways for several bars. Here is the final flag. Well, guess what? This is a triangle. This is this is probably a final flag as well. So you, right. you have a breakout, it's probably gonna fail, and now it's probably gonna reverse. So this mm -hmm. it's a lower low major trend reversal. Sure. And so that's and when you would start looking for um, potentially a bigger move than you would have if you were buying the minor reversal on 20 or mm -hmm. like in the last example above. Yes, like and, and you and you should expect a trading range. You know, even like here, this is what typically happens in major trend mm -hmm. reversals. Right. Lower and that's yeah to the upside. Now it's a trading range. The bears want trend resumption down in the bear channel. The bulls are hoping it's a head and shoulders bottom here, here, and here, and an upside breakout. Right. So to your point, buying above, like after you see 54, 55, buying above 57, which is the high one, uh, bull bar closing above it, closing on its high above the moving average, you should still expect that the major reversal doesn't mean that we should aim for a high day. It right. means you should aim for a meaningful swing. And that is probably going to lead to the high of the triangle and probably going to enter another trading range. Correct. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So just to, in closing, is there, what are, what are some things that like you'd want to say to a beginner who is just starting? We, we covered it a bit in the beginning, but um, like, what are the most important things to focus on? What is the mindset that someone needs to have to, to stick with this for the, for the long run? Yeah, I think the first is, and it goes back to one of the comments Al made is, why does why does one want to to learn trading or, or the concept of trading, you know? And if it's if it's to make a quick dollar, there's probably better ways to do it. Right. And you know, I would I would highly suggest it. You know, the way I see this is it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of like professional sport. It's it's getting to it's getting to learn how to play an instrument or do something over a lifetime. Hmm. And it's one of the, you know, I, I never intend to stop looking at markets and charts right. and trying to understand things and understand things better. So the first is you have to figure out why you want, why one wants to learn how to trade. And, you know, the second question is how determined are they to learn how to trade? You know, I think there's a, there's a realistic, you know, there's, there's gotta be, not, someone's gotta have an honest conversation with themselves in terms of, is this a, you know, do they really want to learn how to trade or is it more of just maybe they can learn in six months and, you know, do that because they, I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of work. And if one does want to truly learn how to trade and they're okay with it, maybe taking 10 years, as you said earlier, then that that's great. That's I think that's the perfect mindset. And then the next piece would just be taking it day by day. You know, having a realistic expectation that mm -hmm. you're not going to figure everything out on this chart on you know month one. Right. But if you can figure out, you know, it's kind of you go to the draw, you go to the drawing board, you develop a plan, and then you you erase the entire plan, and then you create a new plan, and then you erase the entire. And that's just the evolution. You know, you're going to 
you're going to try to think you're really smart one time and you're going to buy and you know, you're going to scale in, take a huge loss. And then you're going to say, I should never do that again. And then eventually you learn to just not buy strong bear closes, you know, bear closes. So the, the biggest thing I would say is be persistent with learning, but also enjoy the process of it. it it's a, it just takes a while hmm. and you know, it, you're not going to, you know, I think it's just have a realistic expectation of how long it takes to really start to understand how the markets operate. Hmm. Yeah, I think you back know, to what we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Right? And no, I was just saying, then you have the problem of, you know, implementing those kind of, you know, you can, once you understand how everything operates, then how do you actually go about getting there? Yeah. Where, where you know, whatever goal someone has. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, like we mentioned earlier, that to to take it slow and day by day, it's important to, to look back to where you where you were and to see that okay i know i'm making some progress so i know if it, if the trajectory can, can, continues like this i'm going to get a little bit better yeah and just to know like when you first start you look at this chart any chart and you're like you see it going down but you don't understand the nuance of the chart you don't know what's going on there's there's hidden patterns and hidden meaning um that just not is not available to you right now and when two years in three years in you're going to look back and you're going to say well, that meant nothing to me then, but this means something to me now. And when you make a mistake, you might look at it and be like, I don't know what I did wrong. But in a year or two years, that hidden meaning is going to come out to you. And you're going to say, oh, that's why, that's what I should have been looking out for. And I think, like what you said, to, to enjoy the process. Yes. Part of the enjoyment of the process comes into like appreciating the little tiny steps you're taking and not focus on, I have four years to go, but like, oh, I'm a little bit better today. I'm a little bit better than I was last week, last month, last year. Yeah, and, and just to, you know, you really have to make a career choice yeah. out of it. You have to decide that that's, you know, you're in it for the long haul and you want to learn. The other thing I would say is, well, you know, understanding patterns is important. What's more important is understanding why patterns mm -hmm. happen. You know, everybody, you can reckon, you know, you can go to Al's daily setups and say, oh, it's triangle. And I just need to memorize when you get this pattern and you go sideways, it reverses. Well, the more important question is why? You know, why is it that you get a triangle and then when you get a bear breakout, the odds and you know, the odds mm -hmm. get in favor, a reversal and sideways. Right. So really working towards understanding why things operate the way they do. And that just as you said, it, it takes a while. Mm, yeah, good point. Um yeah, so in terms of the content that covers everything, um, I'm gonna link your your channel in the description. I'm gonna share sure, it on the awesome. screen as well. Sure. Um, are you? Do you want to talk a bit about your YouTube channel and where they can, where people can find you if they want to follow you? Uh, I mean, yeah, they're they're more than welcome to. Um, I I think you can just. I mean, I I try to I'll try to add more things and and really more of just all that is more of you know. For one, it's, it's, it's fun to share thoughts, um, yeah. but also it's more just, you know, trying to give a viewpoint on what Al's saying. Um, it's all I'm really trying to do with it. But as far as, I think you just Google my name, Brad Wolf with two Fs in YouTube. I think it'll pop up. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but I'm, I'll, I'll try and start doing more of kind of the daily review of the e mini. Hmm. Well, I think it's, it's very helpful because I think you answer a lot of questions from the forums and like people send you questions and stuff. So sure. I think if people know where to, where to go to find your, your take on it, I think, I, I mean, it's been valuable for me. I know a lot of traders, a lot of BPA traders look up to you and they, they, they um, learn a lot from your, your videos. So like, I think it's something that worth worth looking into for sure. Yeah. And you know, and again, I don't want, you know, I'm, I'm glad people watch them and I'm, I'm happy to answer questions and share a viewpoint, but, you know, the, the one thing I do want to say and can't stress enough is, you know, I'm giving a quick overview of the end of the day. I'm happy right. to still answer questions, but I would really recommend people, you know, consider going to Al's trading room and actually right. getting the full experience of listening to Al actually talk at the end of the day, considering that he's the one that actually thought through all of this. Right. You know, so, it, you know, I, you know, uh, you know, the videos that I make, it's more of, my hope for it is to be a supplement 
you know, just a little, a different way of saying things compared to what I was saying, but not to, you know, people need to listen to what I was saying and actually, you know, look at his bar by bar analysis on the price action chain, you know, website and then actually, you know, go to the trading room and ask out questions. Hmm. Yeah. Like I think it's, I've been thinking for a while that it's so rare to have someone of that caliber and to have access to them, to actually ask them a question about what you should have done and they'll answer it. And like, you don't see that in many industries where you have someone that good who's willing to to answer questions. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, with that said, it's also, you know, we also have to understand that he's been doing it for a long time. So I know there's bickering of people are a little upset that there's, he's cutting back on the trading Mm -hmm. room because, you know, it's, 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 it's gotta be taxing over, you know, 14 years or so. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. But it just, it's something that like, while it's here, I think anyone starting out with BPA, it's just like, it's, it's a no brainer. Like you can get access, you can ask in the forum or you can ask on in the webinar, but to give that up, to have a chance to ask someone who, who has thought through all this stuff, I think it's it's something worth giving a shot and, and trying to yeah, get Yeah, and, and you can go back on, you know, it, it's, there's, you can go back to the archives and I think it's like 50 bucks for a whole month. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's worth it too. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Brad, I can't thank you enough. I mean, this has been like, I wanted it to be something helpful for beginners just starting out, but like, I feel like I learned a lot during this talk so like I, I just really appreciate your time man yeah man, absolutely yeah. thanks for having me on and i'm you know it, yeah I'm, I'm happy to help out and just kind of share thoughts and whatever helps people